Welcome back. You know, with so many local bookshops closing their doors, it really is exciting to see that one is expanding. We are heading right now to Apple Tree Books. started 43 years ago. It's been here for 43 years. Bill Rubin started the store in 1975 and um, he sold the store to Jane Kessler who was retiring as the head of the psychology department at Case. She bought this as her retirement project. So um, she owned it for 20, 20 some odd years and she sold it to me three years ago when she was 93 years old. I've always been a big reader. My, my, my father was a big reader. Um, was it my dream job to own a bookstore? No, quite honestly, I, I never gave it any thought. I loved working for Jane. She was an amazing mentor about publishing and ordering books and doing that kind of thing. But I didn't really envision owning the store until one day she had sort of like a freak out moment at the computer and she goes, that's it, that's it stores for sale, you, she points to me, you have first dibs. I'm like, uh, could I think about this? Children's, the children's area was really tight and it was under the stairs in the other space. And you know, I really wanted to do more for kids than what was there. I had no room to do it. We had no uh, event space at all. And I didn't have a space to show any art, which in this neighborhood, there is no art anymore. Um, Vixie Boxy used to be in business down here. There's no art in the neighborhood. So I'm like, no, I want an artist's wall and I want an event space. So I thought, you know what? I'll never know if I don't try it. Some people, I think, are on computer overload. Uh, they work on their computer all day. They don't want to read on a computer at night, whether it's a tablet or whether it's their computer. I think they're sick of that whole screen and the backlight thing. And there are many people that like the feel of a book. Um, they just like the feel of it. And I, th I think that's part of the experience too. Well, I think each bookstore has its own charm. Um, ours is distinctly different than the others. Um, even when you travel to other cities, they all have their, that's the cool thing about an independent bookstore, is they all have their own personalities and quirkiness. I think it's a combination of one, what we sell, I mean, because selling books is, is amazing, and also the environment in which they're presented. And the way we present our merchandise is more vintage and collectible feel, you know, retro type feel, than maybe a brand new uh, large scale bookstore like Barnes and Noble. I mean, all the Barnes and Nobles look the same. That's not going to happen when you go to an indie. They're all going to be different. I carry a lot of note cards um, by local artists. Um, I carry glass by local artists, um, tea towels, small gift items, but tons of greeting cards. We sell lots of greeting cards. Um, and I really try to get local people that are talented. The emphasis here is on selling something different. I do not want to offer what you can get at Target or what you can get you know, at Walmart. That's, that's not the point. I want people to come in here and say, oh, hey, I haven't seen this. This is really interesting. Think about the dollar value in a book. You buy a paperback for $15.99. It's going to last you hours of entertainment. You go to the movies, that's not the case. I think books are a really good entertainment value, and there and so many great stories out there. Most of the stuff coming out of Hollywood is from writers. Um, they're not screenwriters per se, but they've adapted novels. I mean, that's a huge trend. There's a reason, because the stories are good stories. Well, we couldn't just check out the bookstore itself. We had to bring Lynn Quintrell from <laughs> Apple Tree Books to the studio to share her list of must reads because I hear you, when it comes to must read, Lynn, you have the best list that, around town here. Well, I don't know about that, but we try to make everybody happy. Let's put it that way. And it works. It surely does. Your place is wonderful. And it is for you, uh, personally speaking, I'm sure that must make you feel so good to see that in a time when things are kind of dying down that you are expanding your store. Well, you know, I will say it's a risk. It was a definite risk, but it's been very rewarding to see the community response to the space. It's been great. Well, let's go through your list of okay. must reads. Okay. You want me to go? Let's start on this side. Yep. Okay. This is um, called the Essex Serpent. 
huge runaway bestseller in Britain um, that they brought here to the U.S. It is set in 1893. It's the story of a woman whose uh, very wealthy husband dies, and she goes to this town in Essex that has the rumor of a serpent who's that possibly is lethal for people. Does this serpent exist? Doesn't this serpent exist? Mm. She makes. She has a great friendship with a with a uh, minister and beautifully, beautifully written atmospheric piece. Okay. okay. And it's a must. It's a it's a best read. Okay. What I did today. The parameters for today were sig what I would consider significant reads. Things that either have great characters, great plot and great writing and hopefully all three. Okay. Okay, but not all of these have all three, but they hit two out of the three. Right, that's what we okay. can ask for here, right? Okay, right. so moving the, the on. Next one, the next one is Elifer, Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. It's the story of a survivor of a childhood trauma. It's a very quirky novel. She has a very different personality. Um, and I would say it's a debut novel. So, and this gal hit it out of the ballpark with this. The character is immensely likable. So I'm sure we'll be seeing more books from her than in the future. I hope so. I hope so. The next one, Eve Chase did a novel before this called Black Rabbit Hall, was her first book. This is her second one. It's uh, the mystery of, it's three sisters, one disappearance, creepy gothic house. Ooh. Uh, so, okay, so this is a little bit of a thriller in a way? No, Maybe you, it's just, is it's it suspense it's a, filled? It's along the line of Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, so it's sort of a gothic, suspenseful tale. I like suspense. Okay. Three sisters, one disappearance, what happened? It helps you never want to put the book down, right? When there's suspense waiting for Absolutely, you. Absolutely, but well written. Okay. Okay. The House at Lobster Cove is a personal favorite of mine. Jane Goodrich, who wrote it, is the co-founder of Saturn Press, which is a uh, letterpress card company in Maine. And she was intrigued by George Nixon Black, who built a preeminent arts and crafts shingle style house north of Boston. And this is his story. And when well, she- Well, the book itself is just different. Uh, the whole experience in reading this book is amazing. The paper quality, she did a letterpress cover, a letterpress inside piece too. The story is fascinating too. It's end of the 19th century in Boston and what George Nixon Black confronts in his past and has to deal with as well as the most successful businessman in Boston at the wow. time. Wow, that sounds very interesting mm -hmm. then. Interesting okay. house though, interesting, interesting house, which was the premise for the book. The River of Kings takes place in Georgia. It's um, the story of two brothers who decide they want to try to prove that they want to find out what happened to their father. They're not mm -hmm. really sure he died and they think he was murdered. So they take a trip down the river, the Altamaha River, which is Georgia's equivalent of the Amazon. And what they discover happened radically transforms them both. Oh, okay, so there's some more mm -hmm. suspense for you. Now, we don't have time to get to the rest of these. Pick okay. one that you think you, is an absolute must read. Out of, I mean, I'm not sure that's hard to do. That's not it's fair. Like picking kids. That's I know. not fair. I know, okay. I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> Lillian Boxfish. Okay, uh, this one. Based on a real woman who was an advertising guru in the 30s and 40s, it's, it's her story of her life. She takes a walk New Year's Eve when she's 90 years old in her mink coat, and she revisits parts of her life. That, I think, out of the, that I would absolutely love. So again, you can walk into her store. You're in Cleveland Heights. Yes. Apple Tree We books. welcome people walking in. Go in, and <laughs> if, if you've missed something today, you can always ask her again when you're there because you will help people when they come to your store. Pick absolutely. the best book for them. Absolutely. It's so good to see you. And Thanks I'm so for having us today. And for your success, well, too. Well, thank you.